Welcome back. Well, earlier this week on Monday, China State Councilor and Foreign Minister Qin Gang met with ASEAN Secretary General Cao Kim Horn in Beijing. Both sides express confidence in China-ASEAN cooperation, which has benefited 2 billion people in the 11 countries of the region. Now, noting that this year marks the 10th anniversary of President Xi Jinping's proposition of fostering a closer community with a shared future for China and ASEAN, Qin Gang said that China and ASEAN have blazed a path of peaceful coexistence among neighbors regardless of their size, providing a benchmark for good neighborly friendship. Qin Gang also said that China appreciates ASEAN for joining the group of friends of the Global Development Initiative and also stands ready to promote mutually beneficial cooperation in priority areas under the Belt and Road Initiative and the ASEAN Outlook on the Indo-Pacific. For his part, ASEAN Secretary General Cao Kim Horn said that China remains a close partner and that ASEAN is willing to speed up the version 3.0 China-ASEAN free trade area negotiations. Now, to give even more details on the meeting, we are joined by CGTN radio host and former Washington bureau chief at China Radio International, Kun Liu, who is coming to us live from Beijing. Good afternoon, Kun. Thanks for joining us. Good afternoon, Krishna. Uh, it's good to be back on the show, and thank you for having me again. Right. So, thank you. Under Indonesia's chairmanship, Kun, as you know, this year ASEAN is upholding the theme ASEAN Matters Epicentrum of Growth with goals to further strengthen the ASEAN economy and also push for sustainable growth. Now, with that in mind, could you tell us in more detail how that meeting discussed China's initiatives to have closer and stronger economic ties with ASEAN. Mm. Now, Krishna, um, Indonesia is right. ASEAN does matter. It matters a lot, not only to you know to China, but to you know major stakeholders around the world. Uh, Dr. King Hong Hong uh, is actually in China uh, for a visit, as well as attending the Boa Forum for Asia in the island uh, province of uh, Hainan in South China. Uh, Boa Forum for Asia is an important regional you know discussion platforms where. You you know, people from the region as well as from uh, other parts of the world to come to discuss uh, pressing economic and other issues. Uh, so for the meeting between Dr. Ken Hong and also Foreign Minister Qin Gang on the economy, um, both sides, as you said earlier, mentioned upgrading, starting, uh, starting negotiations on upgrading the uh, China-ASEAN free trade uh, agreement. Uh, Dr. Kao Ken Hong also said, you know, this year is the 20th anniversary uh, of the opening of the ASEAN-China uh, Expo, uh, which is a, a really big uh, thing in South China. Um, I think uh, he suggested, you know, the two sides really seize, should seize the opportunity to further um, integrate, you know, the trade and investment ties between the two, especially in southern China. Um, and for Foreign Minister Qin Gang also mentioned, uh, you know, the, the 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 two sides talking about the benefits as well as the, as the results of uh, the establishment of the RCEP, a regional comprehensive economic partnership, uh, you know, to, you know, to see, see the opportunity to work on the benefits of that and really start negotiating, upgrading the free trade agreement between the two. Um, well, the current state between China and ASEAN uh, in terms of trade and economic relations is that uh, both are each other's largest trading partner uh, for a long time also. Um, and um, in 2022, the trade volume between the two sides was around uh, $975 billion. Uh, think about that. Uh, that's a 11 point, I think, 2 percent up from last year. Mm. And this happened despite, you know, the pandemic, despite the uh, the really turbulent international geopolitical condition, that, which is really, you know, a remarkable thing. Uh, and I think uh, in other areas, including, you know, digitalization of the economy, uh, infrastructure uh, development and, you know, uh, carbon technology, uh, green technology are, you know, in these areas, China and ASEAN countries really do share, you know, uh, similar aspirations. And these are the areas that the two can really work with each other on. Um, 
lastly, I think the most important thing are the young countries uh, or countries within the Asia Pacific. It are contributing to global economic growth is, you know, not only their trade volume, but rather the spirit of being open minded and being open to all being inclusive. Um, uh, Krishna, remember, uh, in the past few years, um, you know, despite uh, the rise of uh, protectionism in national government policy, sometimes uh, in uh, na uh, nationalism, um, the biggest achievements in terms of uh, signing multilateral trade agreements or investment treaties um, in the world uh, happened in the last uh, few years, actually happened in Asia. Remember the uh, CPTPP, that's one example, and another example, which is what I just mentioned, uh, RCEP. Actually, RCEP was uh, spearheaded by ASEAN. Uh, this is important because uh, we saw, you know, some people complaining about, uh, you know, the damage or they lost their interest during uh, globalization. But uh, the real way to correct uh, those problems or to solve those problems, uh, problems is not, uh, you know, cl be closed. Uh, completely to globalization, rather to you know continue the spirit and work on the problems. I, I think uh, you know ASEAN countries and Asian countries are really leading the world in terms of uh, still being open, still being inclusive. Right, good. And uh, of course, as we were alluding to Asia, um, even at the Boa Forum in China right now, many are saying that Asia is will be is already significant to growth and will be even more significant to global growth. Um, in the future, but you know there are still challenges. There are many headwinds at the moment. Um, mm -hmm. What are the challenges in the ASEAN or Southeast Asian region or even Asian region is security. Now, one of the main points of the theme of the ASEAN Matters epicentrum of growth is to ensure that Southeast Asia is a stable and peaceful region. As security is vital to trade and growth. So, Kun, just uh, perhaps tell us how did this latest meeting touch upon security? ensuring a nuclear weapons free zone and also issues surrounding the South China Sea. Mm. You're right. Uh, Asia, you know, despite, as you said, uh, people keep seeing now this is the Asia moment. Asia is a real deal now. Asia does have challenge, its own challenges, mm. uh, especially on uh, security issues. Uh, during the meeting between uh, Foreign Minister Qing Ga and Dr. Kao Keng Hong, uh, they uh, did, of course, talk about security. Uh, doc the doctor said, you know, we are, he proposed uh, working on the South China Sea Code of Conduct along existing negotiations between the two sides. And also, he said ASEAN, ASEAN countries do appreciate China's position of respecting the centrality of ASEAN. Uh, which is, you know, a very important principle by ASEAN on its own affairs. And also he said uh, uh, ASEAN appreciate China's position in terms of in the uh, in de-escalating the tensions in Myanmar. Uh, well, Foreign Minister Qing Gang said, uh, you know, he, he agreed that, you know, they should work on the South China Sea Code of Conduct negotiations. And um, uh, I... I, I Talking about security issues in in uh, Asia, we have we do have a lot of uh, issues. For example, um, you know the uh, the, the uh, AUKUS agreement between United States, Australia, and Kingdom uh, United Kingdom, and also the South China Sea uh, territorial disputes. Um, if I want to say one thing that I think that is really important in you know facing these issues and really trying to find solutions to these uh, issues, I want to quote uh, Indonesian Defense Minister Prabowo Subianto. His words, uh, he proposed during the Shangri-La Dialogue last year in Singapore, he proposed uh, the Asian way for Asian security. Um, I think that's something that, uh, you know, regional countries uh, should uh, think about. Yeah. And I think that's some, uh, some uh, idea that, you know, countries or stakeholders, major powers outside the Asia Pacific region should really hear. I think, um, you know, in solving all these rather challenging and complicated problems, um, the will and also the wishes of, uh, you know, ASEAN countries, Indonesia or, you know, South Korea, uh, who are all these countries located in Asia Pacific, their willingness and also their wishes should be heard and should be respected. 
because you know uh, they should be the people who should be in charge of their own affairs. But I think uh, moving forward, you know, um, we know that you know uh, major powers outside the region, for example, uh, United States um, and also EU countries, they all want to have uh, some uh, their own influence in the region. But rather, in the end, uh, this is uh, Asia is Asian people's Asia. I think uh, you know the will. And also the the principles of uh, regional countries should all be respected. I think I think that's uh, one very important principle. You know, when we talk about security issues in Asia. All right, that's an important and also an interesting point you are making. Asian issues should be handled the Asian way. Of course, Asia is the future. Asia is already contributing greatly now. ASEAN, the fifth largest economy collectively. China, the second largest economy in the world. All right, well, Kun Liu, CGTN radio host, former Washington bureau chief at China Radio International, thank you so much for your insights and report this afternoon. Thank you.